हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू इलेक्ट्रिकल डिजाइन इंजीनियरिंग यूट्यूब चैनल टुडे इज आवर थर्ड लेक्चर ऑफ फ्री कोर्स डिजाइन ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन लाइन इन फर्स्ट टू लेक्चर वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट लेटर ऑफ इंटेंट बिल ऑफ क्वांटिटी एंड एस्टिमेशन डिफरेंस बिटवीन बिल ऑफ क्वांटिटी एंड एस्टिमेशन विद एग्जाम्पल important points kept in mind during survey of power lines in today's lecture we will study about the permission is needed for construction of transmission lines and distribution lines before starting today's lecture our subscriber has asked a question the question is thanks for giving valuable and great explanation of my question one my question is that can we consider the environmental impact on electrical quantity in route details is this details applicable for short medium and long term long transmission lines brother the first part will be answered in this video the second part is this details applicable for short medium and long transmission lines the answer is, is yes i think the brother wants to know what are the environmental impacts due to construction of transmission and distribution lines the various environmental impacts due to construction of transmission lines are impacts on agriculture land transmission line towers and supporting structures can disrupt the use of agricultural machinery and increase the spread of weeds second wildlife impact transmission lines can affect wildlife through long term habitat changes bird strikes access issues noise and electrical and magnetic fields forestry forestry land under transmission lines can no longer be actively used for forestry work for for example for growing the trees and making the centuries or wildlife centuries construction the construction transmission lines can disturb fauna or flora species through movement of vehicles dust noise and clearance of trees so we will study about various permissions needed for construction of transmission and distribution lines before starting the lecture I have a small request for you please subscribe my channel and like and share this video the various permissions needed are authority for overhead lines that near or cross roadways or other transportation infrastructure clearance and permits from transportation authority may be necessary to ensure safe passage that means if our transmission line or a distribution line are near or crossing the road and other transportation structures like bridges etc in that case we have to get permission from transportation authorities second evitation authorities approval overhead transmission lines may need clearance and approval is from evitation authority to ensure they do not pose hazards to aircraft that means if our power line is or near the airport in that case we have to get the approval from the evitation authority land acquisition and right of way permissions acquiring the necessary land or right of way to install the transmission or distribution infrastructure is critical this typically involves negotiation with land owners and obtain legal permission is to use their property for the this purpose for maintaining the proper right of way we need sometimes land and need cut down the trees for that we need legal permission from land owners to use their properties seismic and geotechnical approvals in areas prone to seismic activity you may require approval is related to the design and construction of transmission line structures to withstand earthquakes 
that means we have to satisfy the authorities that our structure is designed to withstand earthquakes. Fifth, forest department clearance. Contact the relevant forest department or authority in your jurisdiction. Seek their approval for the transmission lines route through the forest area. This often involves submitting project details, environmental studies, and mitigation plans. Forest Conservation Act Clearance In some countries like India, the Forest Conservation Act is applicable. Under this law, forest land diversion is permitted only in exceptional cases and clearance from the central government is required. Wildlife Clearance If the forest area is home to protect or endangered species, wildlife sanctuaries and national parks, additional wildlife clearance may be needed. This involves demonstration how the transmission line will avoid harm to wildlife and their habitats. Concept from indigenous or tribal communities. In areas with indigenous or tribal population, you may need the consent and approval of these communities. Compile with international and national guidelines that protect the rights and interests of indigenous people. Railway clearance and permissions. Contact a railway authority which may be a national or local entity to obtain clearance and permission for crossing the railway tracks. This often involves submitting detailed engineering plans and safety assessments. You may need to work closely with the railway authority to ensure the project aligns with their operational needs. Security clearance. In sensitive or security areas, project personnel may need security clearance from relevant government agencies. This includes background checks and ongoing security checks for individuals involved in the project. In security areas, coordinate with the military and security agencies to ensure that the transmission lines do not need interfere with their operation or compromise national security. Clearance for aerial operation. If the transmission involves helicopter or drone operation, ensure you have the necessary clearance for aerial activities which may be specially restricted in security areas. Wetlands and water bodies permit. If the transmission line will impact wetlands, rivers or other water bodies, you may need permits under laws. Municipal permits. You will likely need permits from local municipality. These permits may include building permits and environmental clearance. In the next lectures, the calculation part of this course will be going to start now.